Ortiz, Andy Bruff, and of course our very own Manus Cranny uh, to probe a little deeper into these corporate stories. Mm -hmm. Now, Andy, thank you for coming in. It does seem that these two stories are, are dominating uh, BP and Prudential. On Prudential, it just changes the relationship that the board faces with its shareholders. Well, if you look back, say, when I first joined Schroders, you know, 20 odd years ago, if you wanted to do a deal in the London market, you used to get the big houses together, Schroders, the Pru, Gartmore, UBS, in a smoke-filled room, and you'd actually sort of hammer out the deal, and the deal was done. Now, the UK institutions no longer control the UK market, and so, you know, the Pru come up with this idea, and Capital are their largest shareholder, and they're based out in sort of California. So actually, control of the London market has now gone from the UK institutions. And if you want to do a deal, you've got to go and consult all around the world with all the institutions and the hedge funds. You can't just take it as a given that uh, we're going to sign it off and the big fees go to go to the brokers. But did he communicate clearly? A lot of them written this week that it was a good deal but it was agreed at the wrong price. Did he communicate clearly enough with his institutional shareholders, do you think, before the deal? No, no I don't think he did. I think uh, there's no doubt that Asia was um, you know, the first chosen route of expansion. But you know, if you're the new kid on the block, would you really start with a $35 billion deal? Mm, you know, well, ambitious. <laughs> ambitious. On, on BP, Andy, what are your thoughts on that? It does seem that they might possibly have to sell certain assets to try and pay for all this loss in the I oil think, spill. You know, the world has gone mad on BP. Uh, you know, let's, let's look at the simple facts, OK? Since this disaster, tragic disaster happened, $75 billion has been wiped off the value of BP. Costs to date are $1 billion. Under the 1990 Oil Protection Act, that well-known piece of uh, paper, you have to split the cost for who, whoever's involved. There's three people on this rig. BP shares, share is 65%. So 1 billion times 65% loses you 75 billion of market cap. Let's say they can't fix it for the next 120 days, and that runs at $60 million a day. That comes to $7.2 billion. Andy, we just have the opening bells. There you go. Manus is going to have a look when these indices actually open. I just want to get a general sentiment. We're expecting it to open higher. This mainly thanks to U.S. economic data. Well, we've had... BP opens up 3%, but then the market itself yeah. is, o is opening... It's in the opening rotation. So the thing, so it's with, the thing with BP, stronger. let's say BP had to pay a $25 billion fine. Let's just say $25 billion, got to write a cheque. Gearing goes from 20 to 30 percent. That was within their specified range. You know, this is just everyone jumping on the bandwagon. You know, Louisiana sort of shrimp farmers holding up dirty shrimps and sort of oil-covered pelicans. It's very, very emotive. It's very, very sad. But actually, BP will survive this. Well, then let's talk about the next most contentious issue within BP. A, a lot has been written about. The Democratic senators, they're writing to Tony Hayward saying, you pay a dividend at your peril. You paid $10.5 billion last year. Do you think the dividend is safe? Yeah, I do. I do. You know, because Even with that amount of pressure from the Obama administration? Yeah, I do. Because you know, even if they have to pay a fine for $25 billion, and don't right. forget, Anadarko are on this well as well, and they're, a, they're an American company. Yes. Are they going to be banned from paying a dividend? Is, you know, is anyone else involved going to be banned from paying a dividend? Andy, when you say that BP will survive, will it survive it alone, or will it have to join some kind of takeover? I think it will survive it alone. I think, you know, it's, when BP last cut its dividend, it had gearing of 100%. This time around, it's got gearing of 20%. So even if it has to pay $25 billion, you know, the cash flow of BP is very, very strong. Will it have to sell its American assets? That is something we don't know. But, you know, I'm sure the British government are going to say, hold on a minute, you know, if one pound in every seven pounds of dividend in the London market is received from BP. Do you think... Tony Hayward is doing a good enough job in your eyes. Do you, it, well, I mean, apart from actually kind of phoning up uh, Mr. Tracy and asking for Thunderbird 4 to come out and sort of, you know... I know, but you've, you've got to put it in context, yeah. though, Andy, which is he... Uh, there's been a lot of aggressive press against him not doing enough, saying the wrong thing at the wrong time. How... Yeah, in hindsight, in hindsight, would, you know, looking back now, should he have just gone straight for the pipe cut that he's gone for now rather than trying to cover it with concrete stuff with golf balls? Yeah, maybe, but then I'm not an oil technician. And yeah. will he lose his job at the end of the day? No. 
a potential CEO, will he lose his job? Uh, if I had to pick one, you know, I think the BP guy will be will be safer. But you know, let's see what the proof guy's got, got to say. You know, it's in this sort of world, everyone wants to jump on someone who's made a bad decision immediately. You know, if you're a chief executive, it's very very hard because you're under constant scrutiny. You know, I think we all need to take a seat back and just calm reflection and say, hold on a minute, let's just listen to what these people have got to say. Given the contagion discussions that we've had over the past number of weeks, do you think we have, again, got over the worst of the contagion issue in the European markets? Do you think it's already discounted in the market? No, I don't, think, we, I don't think we've got over the worst because it, it, still Greek bonds, are, you know, everyone's saying they're still worth 100 cents in the pound, aren't they? Where, yeah. you know, even my sort of... Uh, 13 and a half year old daughter with a math set will kind of work out they're worth slightly less than that. So. <laughs> Let's get her on the train. <laughs> Andy, thank you so much. Andy Bruff there.